Y'all are beautiful. Oozing with the glory of God. Do you know that? I know I am. I know whose I am. Do you know... It's about five months ago that I got wrecked when I was coming back from the opportunity to plug into my spiritual father and my apostle. And God spoke to me and said, What is your job? And I said, I'm a pastor. I'm a husband. You are, but eh. dad, eh. well, I'm an evangelist. Eh. I threw a couple things at him. And they were all, yes, but that's not your job. That's who you are. <laughs> then he asked me again, what's your job? And I said, "Uh, to love you? He said, you're getting close. I know you've heard this, but it's important you hear it. I said, if I'm close, then I give up. Tell me. He said, your job is to let me love you. And that's where it all changed. Let me love you. And then... This fire and brimstone, which y'all haven't heard me preach hell much. It's not who I am. But I'm just an excited, passionate person. Then I open up a translation that is definitely not me, which was the passion translation. I don't even know where I got it. I know you got me the Isaiah. Where did I get that? I don't know. But I'm flipping through. And I start reading in Ephesians chapter 1, which I'm an Ephesians man. Romans first, then Ephesians. And Paul starts telling me through the Passion Translation that God loves me, and he loves me as much as he does Jesus. And that when I learn that, it makes him happy. Just me knowing that he loves me as much as he does. You see what I said? Knowing. Me knowing. And I read that for y'all. And then I'm like, oh, that's not what the rest of the translations say. Maybe I've done something wrong. And then the Lord said to me, then pick up your nice new American standard. And your new King James, which both are so marked up and circle for spending hours and hours in them because I love the Word of God. And he told me to turn to John chapter 17, yeah. verse 23, where he said, The Father loves me as much as he does Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now understand, I knew God loved me. But I never knew that he loved me as much as he does Jesus. So I didn't know quite how to articulate that to you and to tell you that. Because I was so excited about it and so passionate about everything because that's who I am. I am a very energy, passionate person. And I'm the guy that says when people start preaching about the revivals coming through the youth... I, and listen, I got invited, the youth invited me to go to Asbury with them. They wanted me to go. And God showed me they have their place. Let them have their, give them their spot. But then he said, Caleb, you have your place. You have your mountain. You take it. Okay. But knowing that Jesus loves me, and how do I articulate that? Because it starts rolling in. <clears throat> he starts telling me that, tell my family, your family, that God loves you. 
And we're going to say it. And I hope that we get it. Because I'm really wanting to preach and teach on something else. But can we say it together? God loves me. And he loves me. Unconditionally. Unbiased. Unlimited. And then I want you to repeat after me. His love is agape love. Which means it's divine. And untainted. So he loves me unconditionally. He loves me unbiased. He loves me unlimited. And he loves me untainted. And then Robbie Clark, who did not, who's part of our apostolic oversight team, comes in, doesn't watch any of the sermons, and comes in and gives us this prophetic word that went right along with what we were doing. And he said that because I am, you are. And it was great, and we grabbed a hold of it. I did. But then God spoke to me and said, make it overflows. That's Robbie's. Make that overflows. So I did. And it's because he is, I am. Say that with me. Because he is, I am. Because he is, I am a beloved son or daughter of the Most High God. And my Father, whom art in heaven, loves me as much as he does, his beloved, Jesus. And because I am, is because he is. And because he is, I am living in the overflow. I am living in the overflow of God's love. I'm living in the overflow of God's grace. I'm living in the overflow of God's mercy. I'm living in the overflow of God's promises. And His gifts and His callings are irrevocable. That means He ain't going to take them back. Say it. And that love He has for me I didn't earn it. I definitely don't deserve it. So there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do to stop him for loving me. You get that. I love it. Because he is, I am able to be in his continued presence. I'm, now I'm going to preach to you. Can I preach to you? Yes, please. Because he is, I'm able to stay in his continued presence. See, he is always present whether I see him as present or not. And because he is, I'm able to experience his presence. The problem is, when you're not used to his presence, the manifested presence... Sometimes you get a little goofy. We've seen it, didn't we, Bob? When you don't experience his presence normally manifested, you may say things, do things, act things that you don't normally act because you're in the presence of the almighty God that loves you unconditionally, unbiased, and unlimited and untainted. So you may scream, you may laugh, you may fall in the floor because you just can't stand up. All these things, when you're in his presence and you're not used to being in his presence, you may do and act. What helps you not act that way is being in his presence continually. We must be a family that seeks his manifested presence all the time in everything that we do. Ronnie, when you're on the motorcycle and you're driving wherever y'all went, you're experiencing his manifested presence. So if you want to act goofy and shout and cry and, and whatever he wants you to do, whoa, whatever that is, 
Hey, whatever that manifested present, you just do it. Hey, that's his manifested. You act the way that you want to act because that's you and your Father. You and your Jesus and you and your Holy Spirit. Because he is, I am able to walk with him. Say that. Because he is, I am able to walk with him. Because he is, I am able to experience his manifested presence. And I can act as goofy, giggly, bubbly as I want to. I don't care. I'm all sold out. Because when he walks into the room, everything changes. Mm. Ooh. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but I feel the manifested presence of my Father in this room. His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I feel Him. And those that know me, this is not how I act. I've had an encounter. And then again this morning. And then again right now. Who? Yeah. <laughs> because he is, I am. Now, walking with him is important. We get to walk with him. And you know what's even great? This morning, we didn't get in till 12.30ish, I guess. It didn't go to bed till after one. Of course, I was back up at three, not because I wanted to write the sermon. It's because I was excited to be home in my house where I have experienced the presence of my father, and I couldn't wait to spend it with him. And he began to download to me. He says, because he is, because he is, I am able to walk with him. And as I'm walking with him and I'm seeing this, I have needs. Say this, I have needs. I have needs. And you know something? There's a book out called The Five Languages of Love. Y'all know about that? Do you know <laughs> that the Father spoke to me and said, I speak those five languages of love fluently. I speak them fluently. And I speak them in every language. So good. So good. Five languages of love. It is so awesome. So as I'm walking with him, he's speaking my five languages of love, which the first one is words of affirmation. He is speaking words of affirmation to me from Jeremiah 31 and 3 and says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm. That means I loved you when you was rotten and rent. Because everlasting is from the beginning. Everlasting. I have loved you with an everlasting love. What a, what a word of affirmation. He also says in Isaiah 43 and 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you and have called you by your name. Not a number. My son has a name, but he's a number right now. And his number is 1248109. When I want to send him something, I have to put his number. Some of us, we're known by our numbers, whether it's our social security number. Or when Bob and I were at lunch yesterday, I was 42 and you were 41. Big mistake. Big mistake. But we're not called by a number. He calls us by a name. See, the enemy, Satan, will, wants to call people by numbers. And he will give a number. But our Lord calls us by name. And we know his voice. What an affirmation. Isaiah 43 and 4 says, Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored. 
and I have loved you, therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. What words of affirmation? Psalm 139 says, You, Chip, are fearfully made, wonderfully made. And saw who created me to be before I became me. He saw to me that I am to be me, that I was going to be Chip Plemons and not a number, and he saw it before I did. Talk about words of affirmation. He also says words of affirmation like, I am God's masterpiece. What a affirmation. See, the problem is, the world tells us likewise, opposite. You are this and you are that. You don't like the way you're made, you can change it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he calls me a masterpiece. Whether I'm thin or fat. Whether i am got a bunch of hair or bald. Whether I'm smart or not knowing, not dumb, because I'm not dumb. It also says, I am a crown of beauty and a royal diadem. What words of affirmation. He speaks your language. And you might think that you are you like other languages of love, but no, you cannot deny you like being called those things. Don't you like to be affirmed? Don't you like to be called by your name, telling you how wonderfully made you are, how precious you are? Do you know that he affirmly, affirmly calls you the pearl that was hidden that I sold everything to buy? Talk about affirmation. Another thing that one of the other love languages God loves to speak does is a physical touch. Who here has ever been physically touched by God? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say that again because not everybody's raising their hands. Who here has been physically touched at one time by God? Would you raise your hand? That's better. Physically touched. Well, I can tell you this. I remember as a little boy that I, I was laying in the bed one night. And y'all know what I wanted to be when I was little. Y'all remember that? Ric Flair and Oral Roberts. Crazy. It's little boys. You know. Woo! Praise Jesus. Something good is going to happen today. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I was a little boy, and I not yet known Jesus as my Savior. So I was still a sinner. I hadn't asked him to be my Savior. I was little. And I remember holding out my hand saying, If you're real, God, I want to feel you. And if I hold my hand here long enough, I feel his hand. He still touches me. He touched me on that night in Lakeview Mobile Home Park. I'll never forget it. And the last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to finish with this, and this is what the message is a little bit about. I'm not going to take your time. But the last thing that he does as far as a love language is quality time. My wife loves gifts, but she loves quality time more. Quality time. Remember what I said, because he is, I am able to walk with him? Do you know that you were created? I want to call you Sabrina Michaels, Bree. Sabrina Freeman. You were created because he wanted to spend quality time with you. And see, we think, and I may get excited, I may get excited about this, but we think because we were sinners or we have sinned or things like that, that that makes God not want us to spend time, want to walk with us and spend time with us. You ever thought that? I've messed up and why would he want to spend time with me? 
If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3. That's the bad chapter, right? That's where it all happened. Remember? I'm not going to be long. I need another two hours. I won't be here long. It's quick, I promise. Hey, we got that. We, look, we got red things back there too. I see that. We love it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Are you ready? This is the bad chapter. This is when it all happened. Two Thursdays ago, I preached on the scariest book in the Bible, which is Revelation. It wasn't scary for us, was it? And now I'm going to the, 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 the saddest chapter in the Bible. And I want you to listen to this. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was delight to the eyes that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her. He was with her, by the way. He let her. He could have stopped her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed up leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Loin, loin coverings. Stop. Let me ask you a question. Can I ask you? Is God sovereign? Yes. I'm going to ask that again. Is God sovereign? Yes. Is God all-knowing? Yes. Is God omnipresent? Yes. He is everywhere all the time. Was He everywhere all the time in the beginning? Yes. Was He all-knowing in the beginning? Yes. Did He know what had happened? Yes. Did He knew already that they had sinned and fell? Yes. Did, they know, did He know that? Yes or no, family? Yes. Then what in the world did he do to show back up to walk with them in the garden? He knew that they had sinned, but he still came to walk with them in the garden. He still desires to walk with you in the garden, in the cool of the day. It doesn't matter your sin. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter if you think you've let him down. He still wants to walk in the garden with you. Yes. That's why that little bitty... Six, seven-year-old boy stuck his hand out and the Jesus himself, it's warm by the way, put his hand in mine because he always wanted to be with me. He, I was created for the purpose of him spending time with me. The, the, the saddest book in the Bible, they sin, they fail. Verse 8 says this, Pastor Mike, then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day like he always did. He knew that they had sinned, but he said, I'm still wanting to walk with you. I'm still wanting to spend time with you. But guilt and shame is still doing the same thing that it did then, it's doing now. Right. Amen. That, and that stuff was paid for. Well, that was Adam. Okay. Yes, it was Adam. And he showed up. But evidently, evidently Enoch didn't get the memo. Fast forward thousands of years to David. David, <laughs> David slept with Bathsheba and had her husband killed. And he still called a man after God's own heart. So much. There are not any of those here, but we used to have a growth group down in Silva. They thought David was this sweet man that was a man after God's own heart. They knew nothing about him because they were young. I told them, I said, you need to go. I'm your pastor. You need to. Aaron LaFosse, I love you, sir. Call me. I love you. You're, you're, you are an area changer, sir. We love you. They didn't, they didn't know. So I said, you need to go read Samuel and find out what happened. Those kids, including Matt Brantley, God bless Matt Brantley, Matt Brantley would tell you he come back and he was mad. He, they let David was a murderer and he was an adulterer and he was a liar. Why in the world is he known? Because that's God. God wanted relationship from the beginning. Even though Adam had sinned, God knew it, but he still chose to want to walk with him because we were created for quality time with him. Period. 
hear it. If I had a microphone, I'd drop it. We were created. We must be crazily hungry. I can't think of the right vocabulary word, Raymond. Ravenous. 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 Desperate. Crazy desperate for the presence of God. Because the song says it, but we know it. When he walks in through the room, everything changes. Ooh, when he walks into the room, everything changes. You know, when he walks on the outside of a cave, everything changes. So much that he called a man by his name and he came forth from the dead. And we know why he called him by his name. Because if he'd have said come forth, we'd have been a bunch of dead people walking around. Mm, thank you, Lord. So those love, those love languages that God speaks fluently are words of affirmation. And there's nobody that can affirm you like God. Stop looking to your wife, your parents, your children, the people you work for, the people that you come in contact with, the people that lead worship, the people that are your principals, the people that are in your life. Stop looking for them for affirmation and look to the one that only knows how to really affirmate you, affirm you. Thank you. I'm getting better. All the school teachers just cringed when I said that. I make, I, I'll make them up as I go along. Huh? Yeah, oh, he does, and some of y'all do too. Thank God. Stop looking for others to affirm you. Scotty, that's why I came back and I told you what God said. He said it, not me. He did. You grab a hold of that affirmation. It's him. The second one, like I said, was physical touch. I believe everybody in this room would desire a physical touch by God right now. Everybody here needs a touch. Some of you need a touch for healing. Some of you need a physical touch. Some of you need a spiritual touch. Some of you need a soul touch. Some of you just need a touch for hope. That's, he speaks that love language. He wants to speak to you today with that. The third thing that he speaks very fluently is receiving of gifts. He gave gifts. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all give gifts. And you can't say that you don't like to give gifts because it's the gift that keeps on giving. The fourth was acts of service. Knowing that sometimes God allows you to do something, you to swell up and act on his behalf so he can show you who you is. And sometimes he wants Nanette to set out because he wants to show Nanette who you belong to. The problem is, is we like to show who we are. Take that chest down. Let him do what he can do. And the last thing is, is that quality time. You were created, everyone in this room, for him to spend quality time with. And you got to stop worrying about what's in your life, the things you've done wrong, things you've said, that where you thought you've let God down, you weren't holding him up, so get over that. And you didn't disappoint him because he already knew that. You already knew you were going to do what you did when you did it. And he still chose to come and walk with you in the cool of the day. You can say I didn't get the memo. 